What is going on guys? Welcome back to the data structures tutorial series in Python. Today we're going to implement a stack from scratch and we're going to also talk about the runtime complexities again. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to implement the stack data structure as the second data structure in this tutorial series today. And similar to last time, I would like to start by giving you a brief theoretical explanation of what a stack is and how it works. It's quite simple. This data structure doesn't have too many operations. The basic idea of a stack is we have blocks, let's say, um, that contain certain values. And what we do is we stack them on top of one another. So for example, here I have the block with the value 10. And what I can do now is I can add a new block on top of it with a value 20, for example, and then I can add a new block on top of that with a value five, for example, and I can do that. And this operation of adding a new block on top is called the push operation. So I take a new block and I push it on top of the stack. Now, the second operation, the second major operation of a stack is taking the top element and processing it. So uh, taking, for example, if this is the top element of five and doing something with it and removing it from the top of the stack this operation is called the pop operation. So these are the two major operations, I add a new element on top, or I take the top element and process it and remove it, um, remove it from the stack. So push and pop. And then there's also the third operation here called peak, which is basically just looking at the top element without processing it. So just taking a look, what is it? And that's basically it. And of course, we can also implement things like uh, print the whole stack. So iterate through it and print all the elements or things like checking if the stack is empty. But these are the three major operations, pushing, popping and peaking. Now a stack is a data structure that um, operates according to the LIFO principle. So last in first out, which is the opposite of a queue. We're going to talk about uh, the queue soon in this tutorial series. But the basic idea is the element that was added last to the stack will be the first one to be processed. So it's not the same as a queue where the first person that enters a queue is the first person that leaves a queue. It's the last element that was put on top of the stack is going to be the first one that is popped out of the stack. And this has a bunch of use cases, which I'm not going to talk about here in this video today. But that is the basic idea of a stack. And this is what we're going to implement now in Python from scratch core Python, without imports, just with classes and as I said, core Python. So we're going to open up a new file here, which I'm going to call stack.py. And um, the stack now is still going to be based around a node class. So similar to the linked list, we're going to have a node class, actually, we're going to have the exact same node class, which is going to have a value and a pointer to the next element. In this case, next is the element below the current element in the stack, if there is one. So we're going to say class node, and we're going to define the init method here to take a value as a parameter and to say self value is equal to values self next is equal to none by default. And the stack class now is also um, similar to a linked list has a top element, which is uh, similar to the head element, but this element is always just a top element. And we always just work with this element. So we always just either add something on top. So we could say in, the, in terms of a linked list, we always prepend, or we always um, just pop the most top element, we always pop the head, so to say. So here we can say def init. And we're going to say self dot top equals none. And we're also going to keep track of the size today. So we're going to start with the size of zero, because we don't really have to change much when it comes to a stack uh, and updating the size. So we can easily implement already the length function, which is going to just return self dot size. And I don't think it's a surprise when I tell you that this is possible in O of one. So this takes constant time constant runtime complexity, because we always just have to return a single value, which is updated in the other methods. So that is the length under we also are going to implement the representation, but not yet. So I'm going to do that in the end. So just pass for now, we're going to also implement the push method, which is going to push a new value on top of the stack. We're going to implement the pop method. And we're going to implement the peak method. 
And then we're also going to implement the simple is empty method. Now, actually, we can do this already. We can just say return self top is not. That's it. So the important thing about the pop is it actually returns the item. So it's not just popping it out of the stack and then removing it, we also return the item. This is the difference between, for example, the pop, uh, or actually, maybe I should have implemented that also in the linked list like that. But the difference here is that we actually return the value we want to process it. So let us start with the push. Let's say we want to add a new val element on top of the stack. How do we do that? Uh, well, it's basically just a prepend function of the linked list. So if we don't have a top element, so if self dot top um, is none, uh, what I do is or actually, I don't even have to do that, I can do that simpler, I can just say, uh, create a new node and let it point to the previous top, because even if it's none, I just point to none, which is fine. So I can just say here, that uh, my new note is going to be equal to a note that has the value. And then the new note next should be just pointing at self dot top. And then I want to set self dot top equal to the new note. So and of course, we want to say self dot size plus equals one. So if we look at our graph here, the basic idea is that if I have, uh, let's go back a little bit here. If I have this stack here, and let's say we don't have any dots up here. If I want to add a new element, what I have to do is I just have to create this new block uh, with a certain value. Now I, I'm using my mouse. This is why this doesn't look so good. Um, if I say, oh, this looks horrible. If I say this is six. Now, all I have to do is I have to say six now points with the next pointer to the five element. And I have to set the top reference in my stack to this element. That's all I have to do. This is quite simple. And of course, this works in constant time. So this works again in O of one constant time. And you will notice that the stack operations always take constant time, um, except for maybe the representation here, but they have a very limited use case or very limited use cases, but they all work in constant time. Um, so for the pop method, what we have to do is we have to say if self dot top is none, then of course, it doesn't work, I cannot pop an element from in from an empty um, from an empty stack it doesn't work. So I have to say raise value error, and then stack is empty. And otherwise, what do I have to do? I basically have to get the value. So I have to say the value I'm popping here is the value of the topmost element because I want to return it right. And then I have to say self the top is whatever the next element is. So self the top is self the top next self dot size has to be decreased by one. And in the end, I return the pop value. Again, visually speaking, what does that mean? It means that five is my topmost uh, element here. So what I do is I get the value five because I need to return it. And then I just say, okay, my um, top pointer of the stack is now not pointing to five, but to whatever five was pointing to as the next element. So my top pointer is now located or pointing to 20. And I have the value five, which I return to the person calling the function. Um, and of course, this is possible in constant time, because all I have to do is I have to take the top element, I don't have to go through the stack, it doesn't matter how large the stack is, I just look at the top element, and I point to the next one, and I return the value. It's always the same, even if I have a million elements. So constant time. Uh, and peak is even simpler. Peak is just basically saying if self top is none, then I can raise a value error. Stack is empty. And otherwise, I can just return self top value without doing anything. So I'm just looking at the value, but I'm not popping it out of the stack. And of course, again, this works in constant time. And of course, this as well, this also works in constant time. The only thing that does not work in constant time is if I want to print the whole content of the stack, which usually I don't want to do. But if I want to do that, it takes uh, linear time because I have to go through all the elements. So even in the in the best case, it takes a linear 
uh, even in the best case, it has linear runtime complexity because I have to go through all the elements. So items is equal to an empty list. And then I'm just going to say current item is self dot top. And then I say while current item is not none. So while the current item is actually an item, I say items append string version of the current item, we can do that because we have um, or actually, can we do that? Uh, current item value, we should say. So because our node doesn't have a representation function, we have to access the value. So we append to the items list the value and then we're going to say current item is equal to current item next. This goes as long as I have some value that is not none, or some note that is not none. And then I join all of this together here. Um, on commas, this is one way to do that last time we did it with uh, crafting a string. This is another way to do that. We got to have variety here. And this of course, as I said, needs linear runtime complexity. All right, so let's see if this works for this, we're going to open up a section down here if name equals main. Uh, and what we're going to do now here is we're going to create a stack, we're going to say stack is equal to stack. And then we're going to just say stack dot push. Let's push a couple of values into the stack here. Then maybe something like this, there you go. And then print stack. And then maybe stack dot peak. to see the top value. And then maybe stack dot pop, which is also something that we can print. And maybe in between, you want to also print the full stack to see what's happening. Maybe I can just take this and copy this a couple of times. Um, and of course, I can also, in the end, try to see if stack is empty. But that's what we do. We say 12, 6, 16, 14, 10. So this is the stack since I pushed 12 last 12 is the topmost element. So if I print the stack, I get this first. If I peak, I get this first. If I pop, I get this first and so on and so forth. And um, in the end, I only have 10. So if I pop one more time, I should probably get an empty stack. Or do I get an empty stack? If I pop one more time, it should then probably crash. There you go, stack is empty, works. And I should also be able to say, print stack is empty. This should give me a true now, but it should not give me a true if I do it up here. And I get true here, false here, perfect, works. So that is how you can implement a simple stack data structure in Python. Next time we're going to talk about the queue, which is quite similar, just that it has um, the opposite order. So first in first out. This time we have last in first out, which means last element to enter is the first to leave. And the queue works the opposite way. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.